for this project, I had an idea, having been to the Grand Canyon for the first time, and uh, went up to Flagstaff, and then we went to the south rim of the canyon, and it was pretty impressive. It's everything it was cracked up to be, I thought, because we had beautiful timing, great day, um, just the views were amazing. We got there pretty early in the morning, too, so that helped a lot. There weren't any crowds really to deal with. Saw a great big elk greeted us, bull elk, right when we drove in. That was pretty cool. And we got to the rim, and there's a little bit of a hike. And then <clears throat> uh, this scene that I came up with is kind of a compilation in a way, um, synthesis. Uh, I put together some ideas and some views. Uh, really, the the distant view is just exactly what you see from the canyon rim looking north uh, to the opposite side. So I was on the south looking to the north and um, but I it just was such a um, beautiful place and kind of otherworldly that uh, and having seen a bunch of wildlife I thought uh, including bighorn sheep, um, I thought, I want to do something other than just uh, a typical landscape. Um, and we traveled to um, New Mexico, went to Santa Fe, Taos, uh, and all around, and saw some beautiful things there too that a little bit of some similarity in the terms of the colors and of the desert and so forth. But uh, what really stood out to me were um, some of the uh, structures that we saw that were made of old uh, weathered wood that had aged beautifully and it looked like it has you know, gone through a, a fire because it got so hot in the, in the sun. But it was gorgeous, and um, I saw some entranceway doors and frame structures around them that um, were just awesome. And so I was thinking I would like to incorporate that some way. And other than um, you know, there just aren't these things in the Grand in the Grand Canyon National Park. So I'm putting it there and I'm creating kind of a surrealistic uh, view, a little bit of a dreamlike view of the Grand Canyon. I'm calling it Grand Entrance. And so there's going to be a big frame uh, in a door that's ajar and you're looking across through this uh, and on either side of it, but through the door uh, you're looking down toward the canyon and there is a bighorn uh, sheep, a big ram, and it's looking back at you. And uh, these are all from photos that I took. Uh, I mean, all of the components of this because there I took hundreds <laughs> and I couldn't take enough. Uh, just everything was so cool, just all the rocks and you know, the, the canyon itself is gorgeous with all its colors. And uh, so this was a little bit of a departure from what I normally do. Obviously, I typically do Northwest scenes and uh, my palette um, changed considerably. Uh, and it's, uh, it's kind of fun to um, try something different. Uh, the sky is what I'm working on here and um, getting the paper uh, just prepared, really wet. And um, this guy that I saw, uh, I have some reference pictures, but I don't need them so much for this because the, the sky color, um, I kind of figured out as um, a combination of um, some ultra and some Prussian. And it gets really light toward the horizon. I mean, almost white. And on the uh, right hand side, I'm gonna put in some clouds and then there is a lot of stuff that's going to be um, growing into the picture uh, from some pines that we find along the canyon rim. And then and later on you see a full, full drawing or the, the full 
uh, paper here where you can see the all of the rocks in the foreground and more of this door and frame uh, that you know it looks like something maybe could have been from a ghost town um, but the idea here is uh, to make it a little bit dreamy uh, and I've always enjoyed surrealism um, everything um, from Salvador Dali to De Chirico uh, and beyond but uh, you don't see it much in watercolor and I don't know why but uh, that's what I'm going to attempt um, because it, it is a vision that sticks with you and uh, everything that I saw really made a big impression and I like to have a little life in the work uh, as well as the the landscape itself and so that's what uh, what I'm going to try and pull off in this one a little step away from the the marine painting and go to the desert uh, which is the exact uh, I mean it's almost a complete 180 in terms of everything but the sky color but the rest of the palette is all earth tones and it does you know it will involve some trees but big departure anyway so here i am uh and i'm putting in this in super wet and when i start working on a sky like this i always think well this will just you know kind of take care of itself because it's a wash it's going to go where it wants to etc uh it never works out that way i'm always chasing it and uh, you have to be vigilant you have to stay with it um i wanted much darker uh value up at the top because that's typically what you see in the sky when you look above your head you know you see the deepest color on a clear day and this is looking out in it, uh into the distance and I wanted um, a lot of atmospheric perspective in this work because actually across the canyon from side to from rim to rim is like I don't know it varies but and I'm no expert uh, but I think it's about 11 miles straight across where I was and in one direction if you look to the east and to the north from where i am it was like 20 some miles to the far end and so it's a lot of distance and i want to depict that not only in the uh, cliffs and all the rock uh, and the canyon as it goes down to the to the river but um in the sky too and I wasn't really liking the, what was going on with my paper um, because it kind of looked grainy and it, it almost looked like it was balling up like an old sweater. And I thought, this isn't a typical Arches uh, reaction. But I kept mopping with soft brushes. As you can see, I'm picking up color and softening it and uh, lightening up some areas and trying to blend it better and off on the horizon I wanted a light so I'm getting that pretty much all of the pigment wiped off of there trying to put my head in all my work <laughs> I'm always getting in the way of the camera I just I forget what I'm doing and I just get my nose down there but anyway this uh, I'm not scrubbing the paper. You know, I, I see people occasionally want to work that brush back and forth and really bend the bristles. And in watercolor, that's not something you want to do. Um, you can distress the paper if it's really wet. Uh, but also, you tend to muddy the colors and they don't have that capillary effect where they flow and work through the 
fibers of the paper. And uh, so you need to allow that to happen. And gosh, what a lovely view that is. Um, but I find that I have to stay with it and work it and work it and work it. And I'm going to layer this, in fact, because I didn't get enough uh, of a rich color that I was looking for um, in the initial application. I just sort of, uh, you have to be patient, let it dry, and then come back and give it some more uh, sometimes. Uh, and if you try to do too much on top of it, it just uh, could either puddle or not mix. And it uh, looks like you spilled something. So rather than that have happen, um, let the paper do its thing. And it is good paper, and I, and I, I do trust it, but um, it wasn't reacting at first like... I thought it should, and then I thought, oh, how did I store it, you know, and I'm, I don't know. Uh, I may have uh, somehow upset it, <laughs> done something to the sizing on the paper, but it came around after the water, you know, penetrated and, and the, everything started to work. Um, now, the green line that you see around the objects are, or is a horizon, for one. And um, that's also protection because we have, that's a, uh, a, a masking uh, art gum film that uh, is kind of like working with rubber cement that you can buy in a little jar and apply it with a brush that you don't ever get back because um, it's kind of like rubber cement <clears throat> and apply that to something you don't want, you know, I don't want blue uh, in these areas, and uh, that's kind of what my sky is. It's, like I said, it was um, some ultra and Prussian and just really diluted, um, varying amounts, uh, probably a little more ultra toward the top. So I'm protecting it with uh, the art gum on the horizon just so that... Uh, it doesn't weep on down there. And my table is actually inclined slightly from top to bottom. So uh, it's higher at the top and stuff will run down toward the bottom. Anyway, um, I use it a lot uh, on scenes like this because it's good for protection of areas that you don't want to get color into, but it's also good for textures. And there's a lot of texturing in this one. So here I'm picking up, I'm just cleaning with a, a dry brush. I'm just kind of picking up around the horizon because I want that pretty much white uh, color of the paper. I just don't want any anything there, um, really. And uh, so I'm mopping, essentially. And if you look at the paper, how I have it uh, um, attached, it's... Uh, it's on there with big wide frog tape, which I found to be pretty solid stuff. It does not seem to um, let go. Nothing gets under it. So, and it comes off without destroying stuff too. The paper I'm working on here is uh, Arches 300. It's a hot press, it's fairly smooth. It doesn't have that cold press grain that um, I don't care for just because it seems to infiltrate everywhere. You, you always see it. Um, and uh, for detail work like I do, I don't, I don't like to have to work in between the moguls of those little bumps. There's so many, they can actually uh, look like little puddles sometimes. Um, so it's it's great paper and it's it's tough. Uh, yeah, that's what I like about it. It takes a beating. So I'll uh, be moving to uh, working on the distant cliffs uh, soon, and um, 
there'll be a little bit more work here on the sky as I kind of try to get, go for a little more uh, deeper color up at the top. But um, what I'd like to do is speed this up some and then I'll come back and discuss my technique for working on these hills in the distance. And they're fun. Uh, it, it's all about creating that that atmosphere. My cat's whining. Uh, he hears me talking and he wants to talk back. Well, I'll do that. I'll speed this up. I'll come back and discuss what I'm doing in those hills in the distance and how I'm trying to make them look really far away. My first move is to uh, work along the uh, horizon and I'm using a, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Um, there's a few browns that I mix with it, but primarily it's alizarin crimson and some of the Prussian. Um, there's a bit of... Uh, yellow ochre um, there's very little but uh, yeah primarily Prussian uh, for back there and the, the real deep the really uh, far away distance I'm using just those two colors in a kind of a light wash and I'm kind of sketching in uh, as I go uh, I do have reference material I'm looking at from my photos and I'm trying to keep it very light because one thing you want to um, always be uh, aware of is that in the distance color diminishes um, through the atmosphere and it's also perceived a little differently you know like we've all seen the the uh, kind of the lavender hues of uh, a mountain way off in the distance, even though we're looking at snow, which is of course white when you're up close to it, uh, you get that far away and the atmosphere, the the moisture in the air, it kind of creates a prism effect and you will be seeing a, a, a blue. Um, now there isn't a whole lot of moisture in the air down here at the Grand Canyon, but it still had that you know, effect. Uh, it's the the atmospheric perspective, and that's what pushes it way back. Um, you want to keep your values lighter in the distance. In fact, uh, the lightest values of your shadows um, would be the the furthest things away. As you work toward the foreground, the values in the shadows get deeper and deeper and deeper until you know when you're up near something uh, and peering into a, an abyss uh, it's like almost like black uh, but if it's really distant um, it may you you might interpret it that way but it the actual color uh, for painting uh, isn't going to be as strong um, so always think about that and you, you don't want to lay down a, a pure pigment at any time. You always want to use a lot of water. And uh, of course the pigment's going to go where the uh, where the water is and so be careful about how you apply the water. That's one thing that um, I like to do is when I'm putting water down on paper prior to painting I feel like I'm actually painting the you know the object or the scene or whatever it may be. Um, this cat is persistent, if nothing else. His name is Max, and he wants to be heard. Um, <laughs> or held. Anyway, he doesn't have the greatest uh, singing voice, but he might be able to make it with the right management group. Anyway, um... I'm going to uh, 
come back after a little bit you'll see me uh, checking out my reference stuff um, quite often to see where I want to go. I've already got a sketcher but I'm just kind of looking you know as a comparison to the colors and I'm trying to build this up in layers so I'm not going to do anything dark uh, to begin with and uh, I'm just putting in a bunch of light tones, undertones, earth tones and in the distance almost everything has some of that Prussian in it um, and it just uh, pushes it way back. It gives it that uh, shadowy and atmospheric perspective perspective I've been talking about. So um, I will speed things up again and uh, I'll come back and talk about my next move.
So I've gone to a little smaller brush and working way off in the distance. Um, nothing dark, no, no real um, heavy accents or anything, but there is a river back there, although you can't see it. There's only a few vantage points where you can see the river and you really need a binoculars or a scope of some kind to, to see it. And um, I'm working on these distant cliffs. Uh, the details are going to be softened. And uh, it's in shadow. And so there isn't much color. Um, but uh, again, working my way across the, the horizon line uh, in this whole painting. And my technique here is very little water because now I'm kind of controlling and drawing some lines and so forth. Uh, but I'm working over the top of uh, what I already have there. And uh, so <clears throat> trying to delineate a little bit here where the cliffs are, where are the big formations, where are the big the big rocks um, and I'm going to be continuing to do that uh, throughout the whole thing now there's this is getting a little dark and a little bit too much blue but I'll soften it up and I'll pick up with water whenever anything looks too distinct okay well I'm going to uh, go back to some music and uh, this will this video will play out and I'll have another uh, uh, as I work my way down. So um, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next one.